the home of the Gators, one of the hottest teams in the SEC. Another sellout crowd watching the 24th ranked team in America, Florida, take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. They don't make many mistakes, a key thing if you want to be a player in the postseason. The Gators going old school. The orange jerseys, <laughs> an homage to Vernon Maxwell, Dwayne Shinsis and company. A great crowd here on hand in Gainesville. Gators in orange, the Commodores in black. Clayton lines up the first shot of the game, and it's a triple. Vanderbilt, a lot of depth both in the backcourt and especially the front court, They've got four bigs that just are menacing for conference opponents this year. Here's one of the bigs, Samuel, muscling his way right to the basket. He took Luke into the hands of Lawrence. Four guard lineup, excuse me, Mike. Four guard lineup means Samuel has to guard Taylor on the perimeter. Inside, hand locking with that 7-1 frame tries to alter the shot, but Lubin drops it through the net. Lubin has been so good improving month by month for this team. Oh! And a thunderous finish by Samuel. Traffic, and then came a semi <laughs> right down I-75 on the finish. Lawrence takes it right in on the shot blocker. Nifty shot by the fifth year senior guard out of Monticello, Georgia. Loves to operate on the left side of the floor. Here comes Clayton, back to Samuel. Two man game, give and go. And he, and a lot of people thought they could have kind of snuck in there as an at large in the NCAA tournament. A little two, three zone. Sets up an open three. My goodness. Gators are dropping everything through the net. Will Richard from downtown. We thought we would see a lot of zone a week ago on, a, at Georgia for the Gators. It didn't really materialize. They have struggled at times this year with zones. Three on the other end by Vandy. Lubin rattles it home. Just 31. And gets it back. That's a three. That's the same side, corner three. I don't know that you can help out there. Euro step, a drive, and a foul. You see, but you're starting to see everybody kind of jump on teams projected in the field. Mark, you and I go back to a ton of <laughs> stuff, and very often they get good looks. Their problem has been finishing. You've got a lot of guys who are just not shooting the ball particularly well. Andy, really good on the ball defensively. Kugel on the backdoor cut. Plays well because your top three guards have been nothing short of outstanding. There's a block by Samuel. Samuel timed that beautifully. Wait. Finds oh. one from distance. He's a bit too strong. It was on line for numbers. Paul Lewis. They've got numbers. Pulling to Kugel. Kugel slashing and lost it. Dribbled right into a sea of Commodore defenders. And then a great take on the other end by Mignon. One of Kugel's struggles this year has been at times he's just too loose with the ball. Oh, oh my Samuel. goodness. <laughs> that is going to be a problem for Vanderbilt all day long. So they're in kind of a... Some teams during this stretch on the calendar will hit a bit of a wall. Those legs can get heavy. Here's the other thing that I want to talk about is the game against Alabama, as we see Manon, that's what he does. Man, he's just so always dictate how you play. Right. And every fan that we talk to says, oh, yeah, that's correct. But that shouldn't impact my team. Well, I, I would say the game is you see how drill it offers in power five, power six. After his four years in high school, wound up playing an extra year. And that's when everybody started to learn the magic of fan base has a taste for the other tourney in March. And to think this program won't be backed into the big dance this year. Pulling off to a slow start in this game. 0 for 2 now from the field. Bandy's half-court defense really good at keeping the ball on one side of the floor. A shot that time by Mignon. Probes the baseline and has it blocked. And somehow saves it. Open three, Richard. Got it. 
You mean that's the old throw it up underneath yes. the backboard and then kick it out? And Logan just puts those arms up with that seven foot one reach, alters shots. Richard again. Richard with another three. Bandy just a step late in transition. Wow. Presley, 6'6 six, six freshman in the game for the Commodores. He gets it here. Passes up a three, the drive, and tries to stuff it on Hanlockton, which is not an easy thing to do. The area Presley has really struggled in this year. Just can't. Colonial Life Arena. That game, of course, for now. At that buzzer beater. Oh, incredible. Tyrell Ward. And, and that was an immensely entertaining game as well. LSU's going to do good things under Coach Matt McMahon in time. Clayton on a pull-up. I thought Lubin came up. Say it did. I know it would stun me. Now you and I would still be down for the count. More great action leads to another easy buck. Straight on three. Vanderbilt could really use a basket here. Three minutes remaining. Samuel. A block foul, and he'll go to the line. As close as you could get to the actual <laughs> Ron Slay boom boom room. I, I mix it up. Speaking of thinking outside the box, got to come up with a formula, Mark, for this Vanderbilt offense to get cranked up. Yeah, I know you want to. You're concerned about tempo. That's a bad foul there by Richard. You're con We're towing the line. You know, Rivera Torres has been double figure. The Condon, and then he coughs it up. Good pressure by the Commodores. Taylor's been quiet, and he defers there. Great call out of timeout by Stagg. Oh, beautiful pass that time by Rivera Torres. A little one, three, one. Another great feed, oh. and the layup was just blown by Paul Lewis. Samuel crashing another on the lane. Mignon in heavy traffic. He just threw that one up at the rim blindly. Gators will play for the final shot. Here's Clayton down low to Condon. Over to Richard on a three. Off the mark, and that's how the half will come to a close. But what a half it was for the 23rd rank. Got to be able to score at a higher rate. Gators come in. Winners. Seven of the last nine and picking up right where they left off. Clayton from downtown. That's his third three. Kenny Boynton in 2012. See again, West passed up in three. Not a great three, but I don't know what you're going to get a better. That's the kind of shot you're going to have to take. And nine games, 42% from behind the arc. They need him to heat up today. In league play, he's been 39%. Oh my goodness. Wow. Tyree Samuel with an and one. Fall this year for Samuel. Young man out of Montreal. They else raised their level of play, I think, to match Zion Pullen. Because he's at another level. Samuel draws another foul. To get Pullen and to get Clayton in the portal. I mean, we talked some genesis of that relationship. And then, as it's well noted, Walter Clay, including the Gators, where he took a visit. But nobody in the state of Florida wanted him on the basketball court. Both those guards to come to Gainesville. Lawrence has been quiet. Vandy will go to the line, offensive rebound. And when the Florida schools passed him over, he wound up playing with Rick Patino to his guns and his principles. If you passed him over the first, that I, said, are, I asked him, are you worried about Mignon's size holding up six feet, 170 pounds? He said, guys, he's all muscle. Now he, he... All comes in the West. West right in on Samuel. A nice job that time drawing the foul. Samuel, one of the two conference victories on the year. The other, of course, women's swimming and diving championships. The Gators have won the last 11. And Logdon's posted up. Samuel can't get it to him. Instead, it's a turnover. Lubin, paint touch. Blocked by Samuel, but other day. Struck. 
that empty trange. Oh, he caught it so deep, you've got to finish that. Barreling in. Dishing. And a hoop and a harm for Evan Taylor. Luxury that very few teams have. Taylor completes big first half leads. Great drive and a clear path to the basket by Mignon. Way too easy. Great take, no, great execution. Samuel with an offensive rebound. Sets up Richard. That is what makes the Gators such a nightmare. Plus nine in rebound margin. They get a ton of second opportunities. And the quick hands by Richard. Picks the pocket of Mignon. Takes it all the way and draws the foul. And that's going to shape up after the weekend. More than this one. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> simply given seed range. Now a seven knocking on the door of a six. Uh, this is really an extraordinary, I don't want to say turnaround, I want to say evolution, if you will, for the Gators because, uh, you know, a lot of teams, the whole is has six quad one wins, but they also have a uh, lead. Be the wrong person uh, because a couple of years ago they were my last team in and didn't make it. Uh, so a miss back in 2022, uh, you know, they three of their last five away from home. I'm generally of the view that great wins help more than bad losses hurt, unless you don't have enough of them, but they do have enough of them. On a 5-0 run, trying to make things interesting here in Gainesville as Condon lo loads up a three. Uh, Joe, it's it's Mike. Let's talk about the game that follows us because it's intriguing for both teams. South Carolina's lost two in a row after gaining a lot of... Depending on results elsewhere, a win might get them back in or might just be what I call a status quo kind of game. And hopefully from their side, they're getting the Gamecocks at the right time. I think it's kind of inexcusable really to, to, to blow that game late at LSU. No disrespect to the, to the Tigers there. Uh, Kentucky a six today. Uh, you know, ask me in a few hours what we should do with the Wildcats. I have no idea. Joe, final one for me, and that is from that standpoint, would you feel pretty safe at this point saying the well, they may, you know, equal the Big 12 at not have some bubble teams. You know, it's 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 not like you get nine or ten bids and you put all your teams in the top half of the bracket. Uh, now we've got ourselves set up for a great SEC tournament. Uh, everybody will have their eye on the top teams uh, for Selection Sunday. So uh, I, I think the SEC is, is set up for a great finish here, and uh, it's going to get even better next year. Clayton, not a steal, takes it all the way in the finish. Great stuff from Joe Lenardi as always. Aberdeen fires up a knuckleball. I think come off the hands clean, did it? No, no rotation whatsoever. Long thought process and then pulling the trigger on a three. He's had all kinds of time to feel the seams. Materos a transfer from South Dakota. Condon banging bodies on Comateros. Condon with the left, no, but a foul. Looked like he got hit on the head. Here at Exact Tech Arena, formerly known as the O Dome. Action with the Rowdy Reptiles, another sellout crowd for a Saturday game in Gainesville from the entrance. Well, these are rare minutes because Magnon and Lawrence, neither one are on the floor. Deflected pass and a steal. Aberdeen ahead of the pack, alley oop to Hauk! Didn't mention the best part of the Hauk recruiting story. The fact that he had an assistant coach, Kevin Hubby, now at Florida, was at Richmond. He was the first one to fall in love with Hal. Look at that move. Oh. Kevin Hubby gets the job. Hey, I grew up a Tim Tebow fan, and I love the campus in Gainesville. At that point, they had a feeling they were going to sign number 10 out of Pennsylvania. Condit, a definite mismatch on the six foot two Paul Lewis. <laughs> But the pass. When scholarships were at a premium at that point, Florida was just about out. 
is as big a skill as any for a head coach of big time college basketball, it, all contributing for Coach Golden this year. A little continuity offense by Vanderbilt, turning it over from one side to the other. Vandy trying to cut into what was its largest. This might be the first game all season where Pullen has really not impacted the game a lot. Really have a need of them. Clayton, goodness, such a pure offensive yeah. rebound. He is an energizer bunny out there. Bump and a trip to the line upcoming for Jordan Williams. And then Will Baker is a matchup nightmare. Yep. Yeah, I would add in this league for a while to come and has helped them win some games for sure. Miss, yeah, mismatch inside. If they get it to him, they do. <laughs> and muscling his way through about four Gator arms is Lubin. It was a dude. Start there. Some cases I would divide by three. <laughs> yes. There's some guys that really fall in love with putting the ball on the deck. And that is a foul on a three-point shot. An easy call. Transfer from Lehigh. He was more of a big guy. Leebacks are the defending men's and women's champs. It's only right here on the SC. A win here would make it eight out of the last ten in the rugged Southeastern Conference. Well, we are in the overlap part of the schedule, aren't we? Wow. Williams didn't even have the ball cleanly here. Former Texas A&M Aggie Jordan Williams and a 9-0 run. For Vanderbilt. One thing about Jerry Stackhouse's teams, they never, and I mean never, quit. Right. It's almost a just because. Then to spoil some people in a bad way, that is. Yeah. Pull off more than a few upsets in Nashville, and that'll certainly be the goal. I mean, think what you right. right I mean, Georgia's dangerous. I don't think there's a team in the country in the past five years that has had to deal with such key injuries as to what Vanderbilt has had to deal with. Whether you're talking about Darius Garland. Bouncy and aggressive <laughs> Alex Condon at 6'11 and team rebounds. Right. He came into this game with 93. Keeping up with his second leading assist to turnover ratio in the country at four to one. It's gonna be a hold. 11 points and 15 rebounds. Tied for Condon is enormous. Uh, without question. And, and they'd be the last thought in your mind <laughs> when that trip is booked. Pullen with five. Nice pass oh, down low to Clayton. That's just synergy. That's playing together with over 40 points. I don't think he had a single turnover. Great game for him. Arkansas is one of those kind of Jekyll and Hyde teams. They're good enough where they just beat teams to go. Hitters will bleed a little clock here. Samuel carving out space and just taking it right through Lubin. Lubin goes 6'8", 230. He's not exactly. Mignon takes it right on Clayton. A long rebound out to Pullen. Into the hands of Clayton, finds Richard again. Yes, from downtown, another splash. <laughs> Foul on Florida. Mike, watch this simple play. Straight. Announced his presence with defense. Condon. Condon, oh goodness, he got fouled about four times before he finally <laughs> sells the call enough to go to the line. Growing up as a kid in the oh, backyard yeah. in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. I... Second one is up and through for Condon. The lead is 20. Step back. Jumper is good by Taylor. That's what they needed more of earlier yeah. in this game. Ten points for Taylor, but 
his stretch of eight of the last nine games hitting multiple threes is not going to continue today. Numbers for the Commodores. And an and one. Great take by the fresh. Samuel was good early and I think sent the message to Van. BYU goes to Kansas. I watched BYU the other night. It's a great game and a big week for South Carolina because they go to Texas A&M. Steal for Vanderbilt. Missed three and then a foul down low. Standing work always helps us whatever we need whenever we're in Townsville area. Mark Wise will be picking up the check. <laughs> yes. I hope Denver's not tired of us. He because might. we'll be back here on Wednesday. <laughs> he might be after that. That certainly could do it. Well, I know one thing. Ward is not tired of playing here at the friendly confines in Gainesville. They're playing some outstanding basketball. And they've got another home win. And they've got another conference win. Nine and five in the SEC. Eight out of ten overall. The tone was set in the first half, a 35-20 halftime score, and the Gators did what they needed to to hold on in the second half, six consecutive wins.